So, and my name is Eduardo Camino. I look for Gaia. And I'm going to be talking about uh, birth during the last year. We basically um, developed a pass, a new pass. Uh, a pass in this context is a transformation. In this case, for one intermediate representation, we're going to get to those terms soon. But basically, uh, what we did was uh, in MESA, we have um, two intermediate, intermediate representations right now. And uh, one is uh, the old GSL, uh, GLSL and image intermediate representation, which has been there for uh, years. And then a couple of years ago, Intel engineers um, introduced a new uh, intermediate representation, IR, uh, which is called NIR. And there, there was a work transitioning from the old one to the new one. Uh, inside the, the um, I-965 uh, pattern. Um, and we were to help and contribute to this uh, effort. And there were some uh, benefits that we're going to discuss. This week. So some, some terms, um, I think they are uh, not very... Uh, in, this, in this room, there will be no confusion, uh, I guess. Uh, in any case, I, I leave those. Um. So this is the super simplified uh, architecture of MISA. Um, the, the picture that is interesting for, for the presentation. Uh, so we have the uh, OpenGL applications on the top. They talk to the uh, front end the layer in MISA, which is the uh, OpenGL API, OpenGL APIs. And uh, this layer is a common layer that, that does uh, validation um, of the input that uh, it does uh, concepts of um, validations of, of the arguments and um, against the profile and the extensions that are available and also some preprocessing allocates uh, textures and buffers and do all sorts of stuff in the, the user space, um, and then depending on the hardware that we're running, or in the case of the server rendering uh, backends that we has, um, you get to the what, what what's called backend. Uh, in this presentation, we're going to be talking about the i965, which is the Intel, um, the uh, Intel backend for, for the family of processes after generation six, uh, five onwards and uh, backend as I said before is the, the part of the MISA driver in this case that handles um, that deals with the only particularities of, of the, the target device or rendering device uh, which is an abstract term here because it can be a, a piece of power but it can also be uh, software uh, in, in case of the, of the software render, um, which is the case of uh, as, uh, software dust and backend. So basically, the, the backend um, initializes and configures the device, it does all kind of uh, initialization of the hardware and, uh, and takes the, uh, all the memory, uh, the allocations, memory allocations, powers. Uh, Manage when they should be uh, allocated, destroyed, and max. Um, it also uh, is responsible for uh, taking the shaders uh, code um, from MISA, which is already uh, interpreted and, and converted to an intermediate representation. Um, so the, in the back end is responsible for taking this and uh, translating to uh, code that will run in the, in the hardware which is uh, native code in this case. Um, we're going to be talking about the, the compiled uh, compile shader, the, uh, uh, the compiler of, of shaders in the back end. So this, for example, is a very simple uh, vertex shader. Um, uh, 
this is what, what the OpenGL application will input um, to the to the uh, driver, the initial driver in the new uh, the new graphic cards uh, are based on a, a programmable pipeline uh, as opposed to a fixed pipeline which were the, the previous old um, graphic cards. Uh, programmable pipeline means that uh, the, the programmer, the application programmer is responsible for actually um, telling the, the hardware what's going to um, what's going to run there um, and it's a, it's a pipeline that's a, a series of pages um, in this case it's the vertex shader you probably know already there's a minimum you have to have a vertex shader and a framing shader nowadays and then there are uh, other shaders that have been uh, incorporated and then what we do, what we need to do is translate this uh, to this uh, code, which is a native code for the i9-65 um, in the Haswell, which is uh, generation 7 of the Intel uh, chips. That's the goal of the, of the compiler, of the shader compiler. In this case, we, can, we call this a class. We are transforming one uh, representation of the shader code to a new one. Um, this is the pipeline, uh, the um, very um, simplified uh, picture of the pipeline in MISA for uh, transforming the DSL to the native code. Um, we first have a FX industry. ASD. Then we have uh, the DLSL and the IR that we have, I was telling you before. This is the, um, it's a binary presentation um, <coughs> of the shader code that we transform uh, with some optimizations there and then uh, it's passed to the back end for uh, transforming, transforming this. Uh, this representation to the actual native code that's going to be running in the hardware. In the case of the, uh, the i965, we have uh, two types of uh, transformations. One is scalar, and the other one is uh, non scalar or vector based. Um, this is a GL -S 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 GLSL. IR is the output of, of the MESA layer, the front end, is what enters in the driver, in the back end uh, of the driver, and then uh, is transformed either as in, in a scalar, uh, to a scalar a native code or a vector based uh, native code, depending on the, on, the, on the type of shader that we're uh, talking about. This is for generation 5 to 7. After uh, generations, uh, Seven so eight onwards, we have um, we, have, we we move the vector shade to the scalar. This is uh, how how it, I don't know the exact the exact reasons why uh, this this way maybe some intern engineer in the room that can talk about this uh, later. But we're going to be talking about the, so let, let's quickly review. Basically, a scalar um, means that there was one component per, per, per register. And in the vector, we have up to four uh, components per register. It's a bit more complex than this. Uh, there are, uh, for example, in the case of Intel, the registers can be, can have uh, Two components, uh, sorry, eight components in total, and you can address those as a, using a, as, as, as it was an, an array. But uh, one instruction can, instruction can only access one of those uh, registers um, parts. So yeah, effectively we can we can talk we can generalize it as uh, four components. Per register. There are several uh, chips, uh, GPU chips that. That have this um, that I are able to run um, for um, in, in a vector environment with more than one uh, component per register. 
This, of course, for, for uh, graphics makes a lot of sense because um, graphics um, introduce a lot of, uh, or work with uh, vector operations. They're very, um, many of the graphics operations map uh, very well to, to vectors, so in case, for example, for example, of pixels, you have uh, four components. Um, in the case of uh, matrices, so you have, uh, uh, you can use vectors there too for um, uh, all sorts of operations. So it makes sense to, to, to have a, a chip that, that is able to handle efficiently operations of vectors. Uh, so yeah, this is an example of the instruction, instruction that it has. Um, but you see the x, y, z here and there is an example of addressing the individual components of, um, of each race and genes. In this case, it's G116. We're going to talk about uh, what, what that means later on. But basically, uh, this is an example of an, um, a vector vector based instructions. That's another one. Same thing. So we are going to focus on, on the on these uh, parts. The work we did was um, uh, was with uh, a transformation that happened in this uh, component. That means that um, we work for the generation five to seven. Uh, we didn't uh, work in, in, in so the work we did was uh, focusing on this generation because uh, the scala shape is as, as we saw <coughs> the vector shaded in the generation eight uh, afterwards was uh, was running on uh, on the scala on the scala uh, engine. So yeah, this is the, the name we, we gave to the work. Yes, we do have a name for this. Uh, it's a, for uh, too near past, the way we call it. And uh, this is well, what there was before. Uh, we have the yes, uh, AR, IR, and we have this, um, <coughs> let's call it engine, uh, back for visitor. Uh, it's a visitor because it follows, uh, so we will explain it later, but it follows the, uh, the visiting pattern on the tree. So it navigates uh, the, the intermediate representation, which in the case of DLSLIR is, uh, is a tree, an uh, expression tree. So it's the way you, you uh, it's a paradigm for, for uh, navigating an expression tree and, and do so all sorts of operations from the different uh, instructions there. And then what's happening now after doing this work was uh, transform the IR to this new IR that we're going to be talking about. And then we have this new engine or component that translates from the, this new near, let's call it that way, uh, to the native code. A bit of timeline just to put it in the, in the context. Uh, we started this in, in March last year. Um, then we spent a few months working, and by June we submitted the, the first uh, uh, patch set to the mailing list, <coughs> Misa mailing, mailing list. And then a month later, or uh, it was at the very beginning of August, it was merged upstream after some uh, iterations of the series. And then we started optimizing the thing to. Uh, because when, when it was merged, uh, obviously it was working in parallel with the, with the previous engine, the visitor engine, and uh, it was not the default. Uh, it needed some, some testing and uh, optimization before we can enable it uh, as the default. And then we started that, doing that work in, in August, right after we merged it. And in October, we, it was considered ready, so it was switched as a default. And immediately after, uh, the old thing was removed from, uh, from the poster. <coughs> and then uh, it was shipped in Mesa. 
So right now, as in the last uh, four months, we are running, uh, if, if you have MISA 11 in running, then you have this new pass running. Uh, so a few words about me. Need, uh, this is out of the, of the scope. Let's talk briefly. It's a new intermediate representation uh, which implements uh, static, uh, single static assignment. This is a kind of uh, paradigm in, in compilers and intermediate representations. It's a property of it. And it's basically that you have uh, the instructions are only assigned one. Uh, the the re registers are, are only uh, assigned one once, and then at some point, um, you merge, uh, you decide or sync <coughs> all, the, all these um, registers or uh, variables into um, um, an actual register, or uh, you're able to follow uh, a variable to have all the assignments, and at the end, using some, some construction with the feeders, we're able to, to reconstruct. Why is this uh, better or uh, interesting? Because it, it allows, it simplifies a lot the the, um, the optimization. Doing doing optimizations on, on, on the, with this structure is much easier and um, uh, it's m more powerful than doing it, for example, in an expression tree. Uh, so it's also in, in Mesa, this is this is a component that is fairly self-contained. It has an API uh, that backends can use uh, to to incorporate near in, in their uh, backend in the drivers. Um, near was already used, um, I think it was 2014, but it was introduced in this Scala uh, component that we talked before. And then, uh, so it was already being used when we took over the, the vector-based uh, engine translation. Uh, and as you can see, there's a, there's a, 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 there's a translation from the old, the old ESL, ESL IR to provide, basically, <coughs> to be able to do this um, and have a, this, this work was done, we didn't, we didn't do the translation from uh, IR to, to it because uh, obviously um, the work was done when when the Scala uh, component was uh, started using it. So one of the interesting differences is that the is lightless, while the IR and the SL IR is uh, tight. Uh, this has uh, some, um, also some implications uh, for simplifying the, the lowering passes, the optimization that we can do. Uh, it, it helps there too. And then uh, this I talked before, near is flat in the sense that it's not a tree, it's, not like it's mostly a list of instructions, while uh, what was before the, uh, the, was before, the IR. DLSL IR is based on expression trees. And then uh, in NIL, the control flow uh, of, the, of the shaded programs are more explicit. This means that you have um, you have lots of, uh, of control flow, like uh, if you have an if and, and, a, and a block there, so you can see the, the actual block. We're going to see this with an example, it would be much clearer. But you have, uh, if you have a function, you will have a block for the implementation of the function. And then if you have a, a loop, you, you're going to have a block for, for this loop. So th this is um, this is explicit in the while in, in the <coughs> in, in the ESLIR is not. Uh, and yeah, this is the the consequence of this that we have. Uh, we're much better at, at optimizing near than. Actually, that's one of there's an, an interesting article on Neil by Jason <coughs> uh, that, that he was explaining the reasons uh, <coughs> in the beginning when they decided to switch to Neil and, and it was basically that it was so difficult to optimize and the, what we had with the GLSL IR uh, was 
already uh, it was getting very complex and it was very difficult to do the optimizations there. So we was like a solution to that. This is an example. It's the same shader that we saw uh, at the beginning. An example sh shaders. Here, it doesn't reflect very clearly in this uh, printed version of, of, the, of the binary representation. But as you can see, you have a typical expression tree with the node, uh, with the expression, and then the, the leaves are here. It looks, it looks flat, but it's, a, it's actually a tree. As you can follow, if you can follow, you follow the, the columns. This is the um, GL, GLSLIR, and then this is the equivalent of the same behavior represented in me. It looks the same, except that it is uh, flat. You, what you have is a list of instructions instead of a tree. Um, here, there's just one block, but if you have, because it is a very simple shader, and I wanted to make it quick on this slide, so I simplified it. But if you have another block, or several blocks, you know, nested loops, you will see some blocks nested that you can look at like a tree. And it's actually a tree, but it's, it's just more for the blocks, like for the contour flow. It's not a tree in the same in the sense of uh, expression tree. So yeah, let's take a look at the anatomy of, of the near backend. This is more or less the same for both the Scala and vector-based uh, backend. Uh, we start with the GLSLIR. Then we, we have a pass to translate this to here, as we saw before. And then here, it's going to be uh, obtained in a SSA form, which means it still uh, has no, um, is in SSA form means uh, that all the variables are not, are uh, only assigned once. And uh, this form is what, what makes the lowering and the optimization passes uh, efficient and, and uh, possible. So it's here in this form is when we apply it. Then uh, we take it out from the SSA uh, form of the language we use. Uh, actually, it's basically um, translating all these variables following the, uh, each, each of the original variables so when we ended up creating registers for it. And, and basically what what you get is near in the final form. This is not completely true nowadays because um, what we get for the, in the case of the I, uh, 965 uh, backend, we have uh, something that is called partial uh, SSA, which is we, we did some some um, transformation from SSA, so we, we get some registers and. We managed to sync some variables, but, the fi but we still purposely left some uh, variables in SSA form because it's useful for uh, another set of optimizations that we do that are not represented here. But before we emit the native code, or while we emit the native code, uh, we still do some, some low rates of optimizations there. Um, and then in the case of, of in 965, i 965 uh, driver, we have another set of optimizations that run on native code uh, until we get the final code that we submit to the uh, to the uh, So yeah, basically it's a set of passes as we call them uh, to get to the uh, final thing doing all the optimizations and lowerings uh, in the middle. So I use lowering optimization. Mm -hmm. The thing is that you can you can you can say that all of them are lowerings, but uh, I differentiate them because lowerings it could mean that you transform uh, one uh, one operation or instruction into another, um, but you don't necessarily get get that an optimization gain just because, for example, your hardware doesn't support a specific uh, instruction, and then you you want to translate to, a, to another set of instructions simpler or maybe more complex that you, your hardware can run. So that's the general work of it will be lowering a pass. 
but it's interesting to see that that you can you can do lowering for optimization to uh, just basically reduce the amount of interactions uh, from uh, simple <coughs> ones to a complex one that you have maybe is able to perform. Um, let's look at the the actual uh, emitting of, of the code. Uh, the entry point is this uh, emit new code. So first, um, we do some general uh, setup of, of the data structures that we're going to use uh, because NIR is uh, basically a list of instructions and uh, the way we we do it as opposed to, to uh, navigating and tra traversing a tree, we, we just get an instruction which has um, a, right, a, right, a left part it's going to take the value, and then we have uh, a set of arguments or operands. Uh, <coughs> and then for each one, we get the re register. Uh, and we need to store this register somewhere, uh, like in, in, a, in a map or in, a, in an array. And this is what we do here. So we, uh, in the case of the input on the output of the shader, which is the, in the case of the vertex shader, for example, is uh, Geometry, uh, uh, uniforms, this is the kind of things that we initialize for, for the whole program. And then we, we get to the main function you know, of the shader, which is the entry point uh, of the shader. We do some setup there, which uh, uh, the register that are local to a block of code. Uh, if, if you remember the example here, we have inside the, the implementation of the main that we have here, there's some local <coughs> registers that we're going to use inside this uh, block. Uh, so this is the, the thing that we initialize here in this step. And then we work the, the body of the function, which is basically uh, a linear um, a linear walk on, on, the, on these functions. Uh, what we're going to find there is only control flow interactions at this point. Um, we get the if, loop, block, and function. Function is normally lower to, uh, in, the, in the case of the, on, the, on our backend, or the i965 backend, is lower, so you'll, n you'll never get to, to see a function um, <coughs> an instruction. And then the if you emit, uh, you go emitting the, the native code for each of those. If when you reach a block, it means there are some instructions inside, so it, there is when you walk, you get in the block and you start working the, the instructions, and you emit the native code for each instruction. That's basically the process. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's easy to, to reason about, and it fits in a slide, so it's nice. Then, uh, so this, uh, and then the instructions that we need inside block are the ones that are uh, uh, actual code and not the, the control flow in the code. Those I, uh, I already talked about. Then you have the um, arithmetic operations, uh, there are a lot of them. And the driver, is so the, the, the hardware might run a few of those. Um, or many of those, or some of them maybe, the, the hardware uh, don't, doesn't have a native uh, instruction for, uh, for some arithmetic operation, and in this case, when lowering is necessary. And that occurs much earlier um, when you are lowering, uh, when you are creating the near, is when, when the, uh, the, the backend has an opportunity to say, uh, these instructions, uh, I, I need to copy run these lowering passes because these instructions I can uh, and uh, so yeah. Then you have the intrinsics. This category is kind of weird because it takes a lot of different things. But basically, it's, uh, uh, intrinsics instructions are those that are tied to the platform somehow. For example, if you have um, a uniform, if you have um, um, inputs, from the vertex shader, from, from uh, so the, the set of uh, geometry that you get, so you get you get it from uh, the, the payload, as we call it, 
um, it's it's uh, so you read it and, and write so the input and output are, are those are intrinsics. Then you have the uh, built-in variables, uh, the, the DLSL built-in variables, like for example um, the GL position um, and all the vertex ID or instance ID, all, 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 all those uh, built-in variables. You uh, uh, you load them here as intrinsics. Uh, and also the atomics uh, for uh, the atomics operations, they are also intrinsics. Then you have this special one, which is basically loading a constant into a register. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. And then you have the texture, texture operations, and another category where all the, all the instructions that operate in Texas either reading, uh, quick, uh, querying the, uh, the particular texture, or uh, sampling all those uh, there. And then you have uh, SSA related. This is like a, the instructions. Uh, when you are in a partial form, you get a few of, of these instructions in your uh, in your native code, and you basically have to uh, create a, re a register dynamically when you see one of those to, to really remove the uh, these, these instructions. Uh, for example. Uh, when you have uh, uh, an undef instruction, uh, this is really out of topic, but uh, an, an undef instruction will you have to create a register so that uh, and put it in your in your map so the next time that you see a, a variable that is related to, to this, you you're very happy there. So it's like uh, fixing what, what we left purposely uh, unfixed when we took the shader out of the new form. And then, uh, because we're talking about, about the vector pass, we have to handle what is called the right mask and the swizzle, and those are the <coughs> these components that we saw earlier in the instructions. For example, in the, if you have seen a, sh a shader, uh, the vector shader and, and all the shaders, you can access the components uh, this way, and this translates in the vector shader. Um, sorry, in the in the instructions um, for a vector based path, we get um, the same thing, but in this case, we are actually ac accessing components of the register. And then this is what we call right mask. When we have this, uh, it means that only in this instruction, only these components of the register will be affected. The other one, so the, in this case, the sets, the fourth component will not be. Um, would not be uh, accessed, or would be, it's going to operate only on those. And in the case of the operands, uh, it's called the swizzle because it's the way you will um, you can uh, swap um, the, the components as you as you want. In this case, for example, I purposely in the original shader uh, I use as example I I switched the y the X, Y, and sets for high vertex, and this is what you get in the main code. Um, yeah, those things are, are really important. You have to get them right uh, because if, if you switch one of those brown it's not going to run, you're not going to get the result uh, that you want. So this is uh, it's very important. In the, in the case of the vector, Base shades, color shades. Obviously, they don't have this. They have a transformation that is called uh, scalarize. And you take all these vector operations and you will lower it to individual operations that, that will uh, modify one one register, one component of the, of the register at a time. So yeah, that's basically general, very quick um, tour of what we did. Uh, now let's, let's discuss a bit of, of what was the, the, the challenges. Um, so this is GPUs nowadays are very complex things. They have grown uh, to handle a lot of, a lot of um, different individual cores that, that for example, multimedia or uh, the case of the compute shaders, they, they add a lot of uh, new things and um, there are a lot of uh, new information every 
every now and then coming uh, in every generation there's something new if you take a look at the programming referee models which is what PRMs uh, stand for uh, they are a bunch of uh, PDF very large PDF with a lot of information that to specify the, the GPU and scale the input GPUs um, and there's a lot of uh, and it's sometimes very difficult to find information that you want when you are developing this to have all these gigantic uh, uh, sources of information you have to grab so PDF grab is your friend here uh, and then NIR was a but well, still fairly new so it has been changing and evolving and if you see the if you follow the MESA uh, development list you will see patches for, for changing things in NIR every day on mostly so this is while we were developing this, uh, near change a few things. Then also the the scalar backend, which this is Franklin shader, and this is the, the name we have internally for the scalar version of the pass. It was also changing. That, that was our reference. So we were looking at it and trying to to do more or less the same thing, um, and it was it was changing too. So we. It, it felt like a moving target at some point. So they go, wow, this is this changing so fast, and we're trying to, to catch up and, and make this work. Uh, so in the technical side, uh, the thing is that to make this work and put some pixels in the screen, uh, you have to do a lot of things. It's not like it's not something that you can do incrementally. Just to have something, uh, you have you have to implement a lot of, of stuff. Uh, so it, it, get, it can get frustrated when you say, okay, I, I'm not sure if I'm making progress, I'm making them. Some, sometimes you think you're making a lot of mistakes and you won't realize until uh, you get to actually put some pixels in the screen. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a challenge in a way. Um, then all, uh, we, we discovered, because this, this was the first vector-based uh, pass that was, uh, that was using here. Uh, we found that there were some problems in here that didn't, that were not covered uh, for, for supporting a vector-based mapping. So we had to, to implement those or change things in, on our side. To, we, for, for a while we had some hacks to, to <coughs> take, take the, the use near as, as we were scalar shaded and then transforming it internally. Uh, but after that, this and you really have to have this right uh, so maybe maybe for, for other people it, was, it could not be a challenge but for us it was like wow well, we have to be very careful and, and sometimes uh, we got some GPU hunts because of this or, or other things and, and it's very well, maybe if you, if you are in this room you, you know how frustrating it is to have a GPU hunt um, so yeah let's take a more performance uh, I, I did some uh, some forensic or some anthropology on, on the uh, MISA report, trying to find all the comets that affected um, 
the shaded DB results. Or, um, and this is what I got. So this was the 3rd of August when the, the backend was merged upstream. And then we already, this is so shaded DB. Let's, let's talk quickly about this. Shaded DB is a collection of shaders from the real world. Uh, it's a, a free part that you can that you get it in the clone the repo, and then there's a collection of non free shaders that you don't necessarily have access to them. But this is the interesting part is all the, the non free shaders. They're they come from all the popular games, or uh, thousands of shaders. <coughs> um, so it's a good picture of, um, of of the state of the art in terms of shaders, and so you get you get to push your your uh, pass your uh, backend uh, compiler to you, you expose it to real world. Um, and shaded DB, what, what you get is all the native, the, it takes the native code that is emitted and then it, it gets some statistics like uh, with how many instructions this shader and then this is the bulk, this is the, the total instructions uh, filtered for, for uh, vector, vertex uh, based, uh, vector based um, instructions, not the, the, the scalar ones. And as, as you can see, something interesting from this graph is at the, at the, by the time we merged, we were already a bit better than, than the visitor, which is the line, the, the blue line. So even without doing any optimization uh, or lowering or in, improving in the code, it, it, was, it was the minimum to, to get it to pass all the tests and have the same uh, the ratio of the <coughs> test pass. And then we were already doing a bit better. And over time, we can see how every comment improved. Um, this is only got, um, improvements in our backend, not in NIR, because NIR has been evolving too. Uh, so maybe there was some of, of these uh, numbers are, can be explained by progress in NIR, and also progress in what we did. But uh, something important, most of this work was actually done by inter engineers. We contributed a few of these, but the, the core of this uh, optimization work was, was done by, by, by them. So we, we take uh, some credit for it, but not much actually. Um, and then this, for comparison, this is. Uh, yeah. So there's a really interesting piece of the story that this graph doesn't tell. So in, in shader DB, there's always a bunch of shaders that improve and some that, that get worse. So at the at day one, there was a whole bunch of shaders that got worse by like one or two instructions because there were some extra moves or some things like that. And then there was another small handful of shaders where because we were using all the NER flow control infrastructure, it was able to discover, oh, there's a huge chunk of this shader that we can just delete. And there were a couple of shaders that were reduced their instruction counts were reduced by like 80%. Because it's like, oh, there's this huge nested for loop. None of the results from that loop are ever used. Delete, 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 delete. So, you know, a whole bunch of shaders got worse by a percent or two, and then a few were like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it's true that these numbers hide a lot of, uh, because, you know, if you look at individual shaders, some of them maybe got worse, and some others, that much better. So when you add that, when you add those up together, you lose some. Maybe some shades were affected. I mean, actually, they, many of them there were regressions. Well, but the, the overall. Well, by the time we, by the time we got to the end, and yeah. we got to the negative ten percent, it was down to about fifteen hundred, I think, in the whole database that would include at all, and it was only by a couple of instructions here yeah. there. Yeah. Um, we're still trying to sort out. But yeah, and this all, uh, this uh, I, I stopped I stopped the statistics at the time. We removed the visitor because there was nothing to compare with by that time. So that's why it's, it, it ended there. But if we if we continue the line, probably 
with only the red line, which is the only one that we have now, yeah. then it could, I don't know, I, I, I didn't do it. Maybe it would be interesting to know what's the progression. But, you know, it's the only thing we have, so it's not, it's not very relevant anyway. So we have to keep improving it. But this is, well, for, for completion, I added also the unfiltered version, which is adding the, this color. Basically the same thing, but now we are putting all the instructions. It's, it's basically just for, for the sake of completion. So uh, th this is um, this is the one side of the story. Then we did some some benchmarks. Uh, well, it was, uh, it was they were done by by the, the guy in our team. Uh, I didn't uh, participate in this, and then the results on this bench were not very. Uh, they, they were not, not, they didn't show this 10% or even 5%, they were similar, maybe, <coughs> maybe we could, we could uh, run some other benchmarks and get different results, this was on, on, on Haswell, and so we couldn't, there was no conclusive uh, from this benchmark alone that we got some improvement. Uh, so it would be interesting to do more, uh, but it's not something interesting right now because we, we shouldn't compare with something that doesn't exist anymore. So what's, what's interesting now is improving against our, our own version of yesterday. Um, and so, yeah, we probably don't want to do this, uh, this kind of things. It's only for, for giving a presentation here that uh, the visitor is gone. So. Uh, so a few words before we, we finish. Uh, it's ten minutes still. There was some immediate, immediate gains uh, just by merging this upstream. So we have consistency in the in the into, uh, I, I sixty-five. Mm -hmm. Now we have the both engines, the sky and the vector running yeah. here. This uh, simplified a lot of. Uh, of reasoning about the what the driver does with, with the shader code, uh, so I believe this is a we simplify the <coughs> the driver the fact that we move from a recursive or the visitor thing to something that is linear. Now, if, if you look at the code uh, the, of the old visitor code, it's uh, super difficult to understand. It's a, it's a mess of you know moving the result of one because if you have expression uh, ex expression uh, tree you have to move the result from one to the next and what you see is a lot of, uh, of um, functions that will uh, through uh, a result and then move it to the, to another uh, um, to the color <coughs> function which is a, a, in the recourse loop it's, it's a mess if you look at it if you are interested go check it's, it's very difficult to read while now, if you look at the code, the code we have in both uh, the scala and the vector, yeah, so I mean, it's basically the anatomy uh, that, I, that I had before. You can see it clearly in the in the code. Um, and then, of course, um, this this translates to maintainability. Now that it's easier to spot any problem to to evolve this code, it's much easier right now. And uh, we can have new people uh, entering in this development without all the, the pain that it was by the time we, uh, the time we, we took the journey. So this is this is my favorite comic from the, all the, the history of, of this work. <laughs> This is another one here, which is also nice. This is one after the other. And this is the, the time we will be this. So in terms of lines of codes, is um, the new pass added lines, uh, added a bunch of code too. So at the end, I don't know, it's difficult to tell right now because you know you, it's not just one or a few comments that you can s isolate to say um, there was there was a net gain of minus uh, 2,000 lines of code. It's, it's very hard. But 
the, it's not important. The thing is that what we did effectively, <coughs> even in the case that, that we introduced as, introduced as many lines of code as we remove, the thing is that now uh, most of this uh, of this code is in, in the back end, in, in the front end, in Mesa. Uh, so the driver, for, for the driver perspective, that center uh, is a, a huge thing. Because near, you know, Muse is, sh is a shared piece of software, so it's in, it, it, it lives in the Mesa, what we should call front end. So the driver got simpler. That's a problem. Because we remove code, we move it to another layer, which that's other people uh, also maintain. So uh, that's uh, uh, that's that was clear again. But better than this is that now we have uh, near which is SSA based. We have a much better opportunity at optimizing uh, things, and o other people will be able to do it as well because near now is shared. Uh, there's a, a patch series uh, from Rob Clark uh, introducing near in in the value um, backends, so there will be more uh, evolution in, in the future in terms of optimization. Uh, and also, I think Jason is writing uh, Spirit 5 to new fast. When, when that work is done, then it's trivial to use uh, the work that is, is already there. So some final words. Okay, <laughs> well, um, it was very challenging, very interesting. Uh, though not many times you have the opportunity to hack something that you use every day. This uh, Intel laptop with a chip. That I was developing in the laptop and I was benefiting from it at the same time. That's awesome. Uh, thanks for, for the Intel engineers that without them it would be impossible to do this work. So they were very helpful, very very helpful. I I just. Name here three of the, the, the guys that were more active with us. But, you know, all, all the contributions um, we got, all the help we got from, from everyone uh, was always uh, and, and the best. And yeah, we love Mesa for, for this kind of thing. Questions? Here's one. Uh, so uh, you have a vector and a scalar mode for operating shader. If you use the scalar mode, obviously one instruction can only access one value at a time, while in a vector mode it can access four values at a time. Does it does this mean that in scalar mode you can execute more instructions per second, or are we just wait, wasting 75% of the capacity of the uh, of the shader calculator? Yeah, that's a good question. So the question is, uh, if if you have a scalar versus a vector base, does that mean that you have to run uh, for when you have when you could have one instructions? You, in, in the vector case, you have to run four, or potentially four, to, to do the same thing. Um, so it's I don't I don't know exactly what's happening in the in the chip that it's uh, some some of the shaders are run in in the scalar uh, versus I suppose that there's not a, there's not a performance difference. Uh, I can probably so explain uh, that. Uh, yeah. What most likely happens is that the GPU, like in, in pixel shaders, what you usually do is you is at pixel level <coughs> you have parallel, so you will still get a vector instruction which operates on different pixels. And same for vectors, uh, for vertex calculations probably, you get a pixel shader that operates on four different vectors at the same time, and so it, it executes the same code for different data. So, so you extract parallelism at the data level, not at the instruction level. So very, very more specifically, um, the the Intel shaders run um, each each register is actually eight floats, and so it can run in two different modes. One where it runs eight pixels at a time through the shader, where each register is one float per pixel, <coughs> or it can run two. So for for that four shaders, it's running. 
two vertices at a time. Each one is operating in vector mode. So, and this is done in hardware in the chip. So, yeah. you tell the chip, here is the shader, this one is scalar, and the hardware runs the shader eight times parallel for the yeah. rotation. And actually, the, the hardware can run, the, the hardware doesn't actually care what kind of instructions you use. You just generally the scale of a shader that works for either vector dispatch or scalar dispatch, and it fills it out appropriately. Thank you. Okay. Yes, <coughs> I've measured the difference in terms of shader propagation time performance. So the question is, uh, if, if we have measured the difference in shader compilation time, we haven't. <laughs> 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 It's going to be very different, but, but I don't know if, if you need that. It doesn't hurt much, um, and we, 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 we don't have a good comparison in terms of how much optimization in the back end gets saved because we're doing the optimizations in NERD and vice versa, um, but we haven't noticed any difference in, ter in terms of compilation time. Most of the compilation time is spent in the higher level compiler um, rather than in there. Uh, so I have a follow-up question. Uh, are there any plans to remove the uh, intermediate layer group and uh, generate the near like, directly from GA or SL? Mm -hmm. uh, so not directly the, 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 the question. Okay. Okay. So, the, so the, the question here is if there are plans to remove the GA SL intermediate Representation from the equation, so that we transform directly from the uh, from the text text from the, from the, from the, the shader to near, and then. Um. Um, so there's not really plans to do that at the moment. I mean, part of that's because GLSL has a lot of rules that you have to obey, and No doesn't know about any of those, and so we don't really want to port that over. There's no good reason to do so. Um, there has been talk of doing that for other shaders. Um, just going straight from the ASD into Node um, and deleting that whole IO, um, which would be really awesome if we could do that, but I'm working on it. Okay, time's up, guys. Sorry. We've turned you on the round. You can ask Jeremy um, Eduardo and um, questions. <laughs>